So, welcome to this uh, ESCA highlights webinar in cooperation with the Polish uh, Society. Welcome to the all members of ESCA and the Polish uh, Society. I'm uh, Corrado Byte, and I'm glad to share this online session with uh, Thomas Piontek. The, this, top, this webinar is a new insight and trends in primary and revision ACL. Hello, I'm very happy that you are together. What is ESCA? ESCA is an European scientific society with the main focus on educational and research in orthopedic fields. If you agree with this, please follow up, uh, follow us on our social media with your, uh, with your like. And uh, I take this opportunity to remember the next ESCA event in November 24 and 25 uh, in Warsaw, Poland. When talking about innovation in calf repair from mechanical to biological augmentation, growing pain in athletes, robotics, artificial intelligence, and digital tools in knee surgery, instability in athletes' foot and ankle behind the lateral ligaments. Don't forget, until 14 of June, there's an early booking with 30% of discount. Please don't forget this important event. Also, don't forget the, to submit your abstract for the 21 ESCA Congress in Milan next May 2024. And finally, I wish to thank our educational partners for the continuous support in our activity. Just a few Remember for uh, the webinar uh, practice, practicalist, please use the Q and A to button to submit your question to the speakers. Use the chat only for general comments and for the ESCA member and academy users to claim your certificate. Complete the survey at the end of this webinar. Certificate will be available in your ESCA profile Wednesday, 21 June onwards. And uh, if you like our online educational, please donate to the ESCA Academy. So, Thomas, uh, it's your turn. Thank you very much for introduction. And we are very happy that we are working together to this webinar, then we can um, promote together ESCA and Polish Otoscopy Society. Our society is, and of course, in Poland, we are the like the normal daughter of the ESCA because we are a very great family of the orth orthopedic uh, arthroscopic surgeons all over the world. And I hope to see you, of course, in Warsaw in, in November and this year in special days. But also um, welcome in October to Gdańsk in our uh, general meeting of the Polish Arthroscopy Society, which will be between 19 and 21 October. And thank you again for we are can be together in this in this e evening. Perfect. And I would like to, yes. And I would like to uh, introduce our great faculties, which we will try to today present uh, the topics. And uh, Dr. David uh, Bonazia and uh, uh, Dr. Roberto Simonetta. And uh, also, uh, Dr. Alessandro Carozzo. Yes, excellent. Now, can we start with the first uh, speakers? Thomas, if you want to introduce it, uh, can we, I ask to Davide to share his screen? Yes. And David? It's great to, to start the webinar, of course, the graph choice. I think this is the most important thing in, in ACR reconstruction. And now it's your, your, your turn. Thank you, Corrado and Thomas, for uh, the kind invitation. Yeah. Um, uh, can you see in the screen uh, OK? Yes, yes, it is perfect. OK. Yes, it's OK. Um, so these are uh, my disclosures. So these are the key points of this presentation. We will see some literature 
uh, about the evidence regarding graph choice. Uh, I will talk about my indication uh, today in 2023, uh, and uh, I will show you how we prepare our graphs. Um, so what is an ideal graft? An ideal graft is a graft with a rapid incorporation, low failure rate, surgeons hate to see their graft repair, uh, high degree of safety, uh, low donor site morbidity, and low cost. So we know from the literature that there are some patients that are uh, high risk uh, patients, and these are young patients uh, with uh, an increased activity level, with pivoting sport, uh, patients who have a recurvatum or a generalized laxity, patients with an increased tibial slope. And uh, also risk is when uh, we do uh, uh, an ACI reconstruction with a graft that is smaller than eight millimeters in diameter. So these are the options that we have. We have autograft, allograft, and synthetic graft. Let's start with the autograft and uh, uh, start with the hamstrings. Yeah, it's uh, favored by most surgeon, uh, easy technique, little donor side morbidity, uh, however, there is a, a debated increased risk of re-rupture compared to patellar tendon, and this is true at least for the four-strand hamstring reconstruction and when this is performed without a lateral extraarticular kinodesis. And also, we are uh, harvesting the hamstrings, which are uh, uh, active stabilizers uh, of the knee. So when I talk to my patient uh, and uh, I don't have a competitive athlete in front of me, I tell them that, uh, well, they need a car, but they need to drive uh, through the city. So they need a car that is smart, so a smart car. So this is my smart car option for an ACI reconstruction. Then we have the patellar tendon. This has been considered the gold standard for a long, long time. Uh, has lower retail rate compared to uh, hamstrings. However, it has a, a donor side morbidity with some anterior knee pain. It's a more complex surgery and there is the risk of graft tunnel mismatch. And then there is the quad tendon, which is a very up-to-date uh, option, uh, which is uh, uh, twice as thick as the patellar tendon. Uh, it can be harvested in different options. So you can harvest just the first two layers, you can do a full thickness, you can harvest the patellar bone block uh, or, or not. Uh, it has little or no donor side morbidity, and the results are comparable to patellar tendon. So, for the, the, the athletes, competitive athletes who need to race in a track, this is the Ferrari. These two options represent the Ferrari of the ACL. Then there is the Peroneus Longus. I don't have uh, any experience regarding it, but it's uh, uh, an option that uh, uh, should be also uh, considered. Then we have allograft. Allograft, what do we know uh, about allograft? We know that irradiation can uh, increase the risk of re-rupture significantly. We know that there is a slower integration process and therefore a slower rehabilitation phase. Uh, there are higher rates of reoperation and there is a risk of immune reaction. This needs to be taken into account. So when we look primary ACLs, we see that uh, uh, there is a higher re-rupture rate, mostly in females, in athletes, any young patient. When we look at revision ACL reconstruction uh, we, and we consider soft tissue allograft, we see that the results are compared, uh, comparable to autographs. Same thing for patients over 50 years of age. So this is a second, second hand car, it's not uh, my first options. And on the left, you will see uh, two uh, cases, one is mine and one is uh, was done out elsewhere, where there is a significant osteolysis and a significant immune reaction around the uh, allograft. And then we have synthetic graft. These grafts have a faster, fast rehabilitation, an early recovery. Uh, patients can be uh, allowed to sport uh, at as early as two or three months. Some studies are promising. Some other studies show high complication rates with synovitis and reruption, uh, uh, rupture rates, high rupture rates at five to 10 years after surgery. So this is kind of a fast car. This is a very fast car, but it doesn't last really long. So when I was assigned this presentation, I said, fantastic. I wrote a chapter in 2012, so the work is already done. And then I realized that my indication completely changed uh, in over 10 years. Um, so right now for primary ACL, I do generally 70% quad tendon. I do a 25% of six strand uh, hamstring tendon. I do a 5% of patellar tendon, less than 1% of synthetic. And for revision, I generally use 60% of quad tendon, 30% of patellar, 5% of six strand hamstrings, and 5% of allograft, 
and less than 1% of synthetic. So what are my indication? I generally use hamstrings for patients with open physis, so uh, younger than 14 years old or uh, over 27 years old, generally are low demand patients uh, or not doing pivoting sports. Patellar tendon and quad tendon uh, share the same indications. There are generally uh, young patients, elite athletes, uh, pivoting sports and uh, uh, revision ACL reconstruction. Allograft, uh, I use it generally in older patients, uh, low demand, uh, both for primary and revision ACLs. Uh, synthetic are older patients, but with the need of a rapid recovery. So uh, like a ski teacher that needs uh, to go back to teaching ski in two months or three months. Uh, this is a real case that we recently did. So well, when are these grafts contraindicated? Hamstrings for me is contraindicated when there is a generalized laxity when there are medial collateral ligament injuries and in high-risk patients. Uh, bone patellar tendon bone is contraindicated when there is an osgood flatter disease in a female with anterior knee pain and in kneeling jobs or kneeling sports. I don't really have contraindication for quad tendon right now. Uh, allografts are contraindicated and the synthetic grafts, uh, both share the same contraindications, uh, should be contraindicated in young patients, active patients, and high-risk patients. So no matter what graft you choose, uh, the graft preparation is very, very important. And most of all, it's very, very important to do a pre-soaking with vancomycin. This will bring your infection rate almost to 0%. So this is uh, crucial and paramount. So a few videos of how we prepare our grafts. This is a, a full thickness uh, uh, quad graft prepared with uh, for suspension, both on the tibia and on the femur. I like suspension. Uh, a lot for fixation of my graft, so I uh, like a little less uh, interference screws. Uh, this is a, a preparation of a patellar tendon. This is the harvesting of the patellar bone plug, which should be smaller than 20 millimeters in length in order to avoid patellar fracture. The drills, uh, uh, drill holes in the bone plugs to uh, use the, to put some uh, traction sutures. And then this suture on the proximal part of the graft will avoid uh, the graft uh, to go around the, the interference screw when you fix the, femur, the femoral side. And then we measure it in order to avoid graft tunnel mismatch and drill adequate tunnels for uh, our, our graft. This is how we prepare our six strand hamstring. Uh, it's a technique that was uh, originally described by Frank Noyes uh, with some modifications. As you can see, we can uh, enlarge uh, the graft size and uh, do a six strand pre-tension and pre-soak with the vancomycin. So concluding, uh, we, all, we, we, we all have different graphs available. Uh, each graph has uh, pros and cons. Um, we think that the choice of the graph should be based on the patient. So it's, uh, uh, um, we should look at the age, we should look at the sports, we should look at many different factors. Uh, we try to avoid allografts because we had some uh, uh, bad results, uh, but sometimes uh, it's not, is not possible. And so for this reason, we think that ACL reconstruction or ACL revision, revision should be a tailored choice. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Davide. Thank you very much. And now it's my glad to introduce uh, Lucas Paschesny. Please share your screen. You're talking about ACL uh, repair, new technology for an old idea. Please. Can you see it? Can you see my, my uh, screen? Actually not. Okay, just a second. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. It's better right now. Yes, perfect. Okay, thank you very much for, for the invitation. Uh, I would like to, to share with you my um, uh, experience uh, with uh, ACL repair. Is it a new technology or for an old uh, idea? Uh, this is my disclosures. What is the definition? Let's start with the definition. Primary suture or reinsertion of the torn ACL. This is, uh, during this presentation, I will use this, uh, this deficit definition. Uh, it is important to understand that ACL repair, of course, is not a reconstruction. And what is more in Poland, we call augmentation. Uh, uh, 
Sometimes we call augmentation as a partial uh, reconstruction. So in this presentation, for me, augmentation means simply a reinforcement uh, of the repair, but not the partial ACL reconstruction. Uh, what are the challenges? The challenges uh, are uh, uh, quite, uh, quite uh, obvious. Uh, the biology of healing is crucial for the cyclone outcome. Uh, there is no biological chamber uh, in the, uh, with ACL. Uh, Synovial fluid will wash probably all biological factors uh, in the, uh, especially in the mid substance uh, terms, and timing uh, is uh, is crucial for the biology to act. Uh, here uh, there is a, a, just a drawing showing that if you have mid substance uh, tear or, or distal tear, probably the fluid will wash everything out. Maybe there is some some biological place for uh, factors to, to act uh, in the proximal terms. And we know from the literature that uh, uh, the, the proximal avulsion type one terms uh, and uh, type two terms uh, heal well after the repair. Uh, however, uh, type three, uh, uh, the mid substance uh, uh, has uh, poor healing. Uh, what is important in the repairing of the, of the ACL is to understand what is a mechanical transduction. Mechanical transduction is a process where uh, collagen uh, will uh, form its fibers um, due to um, the extracellular matrix and also, and also fibroblast uh, according to the stress which is uh, involved uh, during the healing. So it's important to uh, respect this uh, mechanical transduction pro uh, uh, process. So we have uh, quite uh, a lot of experimental uh, methods like the stents, scaffolds, mesh, and membranes. Uh, but I would like, uh, and if you uh, if you are interested, there's a quite uh, quite uh, uh, interesting uh, paper, the review from from Poland about advanced graph development approaches. So I recommend to to uh, if you are interested in experimental techniques. But I would like during my presentation stick with uh, something which is uh, better. Um, understand and better uh, has better uh, evidence. So uh, uh, this is uh, uh, four modalities which we can use. So reinsertion with anchors, suture repair, static augmentation, and dynamic augmentation. Uh, with uh, reinsertion uh, and uh, uh, so let's say uh, let's check what is the evidence um, for those uh, alternatives. Uh, there is. Uh, uh, Systematic review of meta analysis uh, from uh, 2000, uh, 2020. Uh, and as, as can you see, um, generally the results for primary without uh, repair without augmentation, uh, the failure rates are around 10%, for static augmentation around 7%, and dynamic augmentation about 11%. And more, moreover, uh, dynamic augmentation resulted in more operation more hardware uh, removal. Uh, I will uh, discuss this issue uh, later on. Uh, another uh, systematic review, uh, more than uh, two, uh, 2,000 and uh, almost 2,000 half patients, uh, 1,000 patients. Uh, also, uh, not so good results as for the reconstruction and the conclusion. Uh, the ACL reconstruction results in better survival ship and better uh, perceived uh, post, um, patient perceived uh, postoperative improvement than ACL repair. So at present, ACL reconstruction appears to um, to be superior treatment strategy in the vast majority of cases. So it's not so uh, advantageous the repair. It uh, seems to be not so good in confront of uh, reconstruction. Uh, regarding the reinsertion with anchors and suture repair. There is no reinforcement of the repair, so the uh, protocol uh, should be quite um, quite slow because we we don't have another measure to to protect the the, the repair. However, uh, I would like to to show you some uh, some other experience with static augmentation and uh, and dynamic augmentation. Uh, what is static uh, augmentation? So called so called internal base. Uh, it is high strength tape. Uh, sutures um, are st adapting stamp, uh, and there is a seat belt uh, concept. Uh, and this is one of our uh, cases. Uh, it is uh, from application. So we have uh, suture, uh, drilling, 
and then we see the, uh, the final outcome during the operation. And then this patient had uh, problems with range of motion, uh, with extension, there was a lack of extension. So we did a, um, a reoperation after one year, uh, after one year, and you see fibrotic uh, uh, scar uh, in the place of uh, ACL after the removal of the uh, excessive uh, scar, uh, there was an improvement. And then, uh, so to summarize the, the static, um, the static uh, concept, uh, for sure it's John and bone friendly and bone friendly. Uh, it protects the repair, but by the seatbelt concept. So it, so it acts like, uh, like black and white behavior or there is stiffness or there is, uh, uh, there is too much movement. Uh, it uh, doesn't uh, need uh, implant removal and uh, there are some st stiffness um, and fibrosis risk uh, issues. Uh, regarding the dynamic augmentation, uh, the, the last technique I would like to, uh, to discuss, uh, this is a different concept. Uh, there is a spring inside a monoblock implant. This is quite tough and pink implant, so it's uh, 10 millimeter in the diameter. And uh, uh, what is important, uh, there is a spring inside and this is still implant. So, Maybe it is possible that high um, high percentage of the removal is due to uh, this steel concept. So patients want to remove the, the implant because it's not titanium, it is steel. And one of our uh, cases, suture, the remnant sutured and the, uh, the outcome during the operation. And then the patient required uh, the removal of the of the implant, but due to just that it was steel and he uh, he didn't want to to have it for for the whole life, and this is the final outcome after after one year. To summarize, um, uh, the advantages is from it, it, the the dynamic stabilization promotes healing, but there is a risk of hardware removal, uh, and it is not so friendly for bone because the implant is quite big. Take home message. Quality of the stump is crucial. Uh, please respect the timing, be aware of stick, the stiffness risk, and inform the patient honestly, because right now there is no strong evidence for the repair of the, of the ACL, and the evidence is that uh, the reconstruction is uh, better. Uh, and of course, I invite you for uh, the, our Congress, as uh, public context said, and for uh, ESCA events we can meet. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Lukas, for such a great talk. And now we will go for the uh, to the next uh, about when and why led an important addition to ACR. Uh, Dr. Roberto Simonetta, please. Yes, thank you. Can you see the screen? Yes, perfect. Yes, super. Thank you. Thank you, Corrado. Thank you, Thomas, for the invitation. And thank you for, to Domenico, my fellow, that support me in this talk. So uh, let's talk about, uh, I have no disclosure for this talk. And let's talk about uh, uh, lateral articular tenodesis uh, in additional ICL reconstruction. All we know that ACL tear represents 74% of all knee injuries in pivoting sports and the ACL reconstruction is so uh, frequent that uh, it is in the top 10 orthopedics procedure. The anatomical anterior crucial ligament reconstruction is currently the gold standard treatment uh, for restoring knee stability. However, Mm, the literature report high rates of graft rupture until 30% in young patients and pivoting sports. And we know that uh, a graft there is a catastrophic event for patients, uh, for their families, sports club, medical teams. Moreover, it must be considered that functional results after ACO revision are deficiently uh, compared than primary. So uh, also uh, in, uh, uh, in outcomes have uh, low rates of return to pre-injury levels of sports. 
as you can see, uh, one or two patients in, in five did not return to pre-injury level. And I'll tell the, 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 the pathophysiology of these adverse outcomes is multifactory. We have to consider hyperlaxity, bone morphology, uh, geometry of the knee, uh, the age of the patients, the gender, and pivoting sports. Another important point is that uh, an isolated ACL tear is only in 24% of cases. In my experience, uh, is uh, even less. Uh, combined injuries are much more frequent, especially in high risk patients. Um, the search for the major secondary stabilizer of the knee must be meticulous and systematic and always when it's possible must be uh, repaired. Uh, that said, why use a LED? Uh, the rationale for considering a competent lateral extraarticular tenodesis is based on its ability to provide an increased lever arm for controlling the rotational. Rotational instability is fundamental. Uh, uh, the control of rotational instability. And this is the wagon wheel analogy in the courtesy of my friend Fabrizio Margheritini, the wagon wheel analogy of the pivot shift dysfunction. It's easier to stop it by breaking the rim than by breaking the hub. So why use LED? Let reduce pivot shift in ICL rate extraction, improve outcomes and reduce failure rate. The question is when to use a LED. The literature is not unequal regarding the indication to perform a LED. And I totally agree with this group of experts, this group of friends that um, divide the risk factor in uh, decisive and secondary criteria and uh, a combined of the ACL and uh, LED reconstruction should be considered for patient who presents one decisive uh, criteria or two or more secondary criteria. Uh, the criteria choose the amount patient's history, clinical and imaging, and patient's profile. Uh, the primary criteria is the ICO revision and high grade of pivot shift and Remember that a severe pivot shift is a clear sign of not isolated ACL tear. Uh, another primary criteria is a second fracture. And uh, that should be considered also in high level pivoting sports athletes and hyperlaxity. The secondary criteria a remind in presence of two or more of the secondary criteria, you should consider the left. Secondary criteria are contralateral ACO rupture, a lack band measure of seven millimeters, a deep lateral femoral notch sign, and uh, um, increased tibial slope, and uh, an age less of 25. Lead techniques is not the, the topic of my talk, but this is the uh, most used. The Cocker Arnold and used uh, one centimeter of iliotibial band passed behind the lateral collateral ligament. They use the lateral collateral ligament like a pulley to control the uh, rotational instability to control internal rotation. Probably the Lemaire, modified Lemaire is the most used because it's most simple to do. So the take home message, remember the ICL often is not isolated injury. The ICL reconstruction is not sufficient to control the rotational instability. Rotational instability is fundamental. 
lateral extracticular tenodesis reduce rotational instability and consider all the risk factors to protect your graft with uh, a left. Consider especially young patients uh, that want to return a pivoting sport, high new level athlete, uh, hyperlaxity, high grade of pilot shift, and uh, increase of posterior slope. Of course, in the revision, I prefer always a lead. Thank you very much and for, for your attention, and we wait you in Milan for the next EFCA Congress. Thanks a lot, uh, Roberto. Excellent presentation. And now it's my very pleasure to introduce Thomas Piontek for uh, his topic uh, regarding ACL meniscus. Do we know his wound the knee instability? Yeah. I Please, think, Thomas. Yes. Thank you again that we are together. And I would like to talk about this topic, my disclosures. And in the beginning, I would like to say, quit with agis prudenter agas et respice fine. And this questa remanum is talking that we should do every time, everything to see the end, what we are doing, and especially the ACL reconstruction. On the beginning, I would like to do the, the questions for you. If a pivot shift test is positive, you expect when the patient has chronic anterior instability, multiligament instability, anterior instability with injury of the lateral meniscus root, or anterior instability with the injury of the lateral meniscus root and ramp lesion of the medial meniscus. Why are I asking this? Because I think we have to know exactly what we uh, what we are talking. Because um, uh, I think uh, the, all these problems with ACL exist. Because if we are uh, thinking about ACL, it's very certain that we have only ACL rupture. We have a lot of other problems, and we have to investigate what we uh, should do. And I hope that we have the answers. And okay. And I think yes. I think that mostly is is the problem with the meniscus. And uh, you are right. And I will go forward. Uh, sorry. Okay. And um, uh, ten years ago, in the, in the last decade, uh, if we see what we were done, that mostly with the ACL, we've done also the meniscectomy. And I think we have to change this, um, this the type of thinking because really we not create the good stabilization of the knee. In our consensus of ESCA presented in 2019, <clears throat> presented that we should really take care about meniscus and repair, everything was repayable. And of course we have now a lot of good equipment from the industry companies and we can find, every, everybody can find something good for, for this treatment. Why we should do suture meniscus and save the meniscus together with ACL? Because if we resect meniscus, we can create a future atrosis. And also, we will create the residual postoperative laxity when we do this both operation together. We know from the literature of the papers that we can achieve good healing when we use this, the, 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 the many types of suturing, for example, inside out, outside in, everything what there's a lot of information that we can really also um, um, save the radial tears. We know exactly the ACL. We, if we reconstruct ACL, we stabilize our knee. But of course, we have to find uh, the proper way how to do that. As any a couple um, anatomical waves understand how the ACL is created, and we try, for example, to to re, to 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 do our ACL like the, the anatomy exists. And the idea of double bundle, of course, that we know this history, now modern idea of ribbon technique um, was established and it's now created by the also Polish colleagues, Fingerski, Zdanowicz, Simon from, from Europe. Then we create the attachment for the our graft, flat ribbon graft to the, to the femur, like the very flat and the C-shape uh, for the tibia. The other technique, for example, presented also for our colleagues with Japan, three bundles, and presented before by Wukash, um, augmentation technique or internal bracing or dynamic technique. Every of these techniques, we try to find the possibility to stabilize me very good. But we know also, the presented before was Alessandro, that if we have ACL, always we can find also the other problems, like, for example, problem in lateral 
our lateral a capsule like the second um, rupture. And we know from the kinematic rate for many factors, as many stress, postulatoral coronary, postural medial coronary injuries, increased coronary pain, and also the increased sagittal plane, we can create our instability of, of the knee. We are focused mostly on the lateral meniscus. It is true because in many papers presented that if we have the posterior root tear and we should really reconstruct together with the, to save this posterior root tear with the reconstruction because then we can stabilize proper our knee. This paper presents that results of the, this uh, study present the root repair could be done during a reconstruction. Hey, ciao. How are you? And then we can really create the, the good stabilization. Um, our ask a webinar also exists in the media uh, ACL and, and Polish. So my residence is next Polish. speaker, so I won't take it because Shanti. I'm here. I cannot. <laughs> Boy, sorry, it's because great. I can. Okay. And also, we have the, the lot of information. If we oh, have the no, Alessandro, speak the microphone, per favore. Sorry, you pass. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Ciao, ciao. Alessandro, speak the microphone, per favore. Sorry, okay. Thomas. Okay. Also, we have the if we we should the focus of um, about our 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 uh, our um, um, stabilization of the knee. If we have the also problem of the medial meniscus, special the ramp lesion, and also this paper presented if we will save the the, the meniscus uh, in the in the posterior part like ramp, we can achieve good um, uh, trans good stabilization of the knee, and uh, this is very important also for our. For, for, for our operations. And I, of course, have the, the, the second qu question for you because uh, not only meniscus and ACL is very important for our treatment. Do you think, uh, do you think about abnormal slope of the tibia? Uh, we think about it before primary ACL reconstruction or before ACL revision operation, before second ACL revision operation, always when the patient has gain recurvatum. Because we know exactly that uh, uh, the, the, the slope um, play a, a big role in, in stabilization of our knee. And we have the more than 10 degree, then we can achieve not good results of reconstruction of ACL. And we can uh, lead to, of course, to revision. And the answer for the question is, of course, I think we should think about this before our revision operation. I don't know exactly that we are doing the before primary ACL reconstruction, but special, we know that if we have revision, we have to thinking about it. And, and how the, why we are talking about that? Because we know exactly from this paper and from many other paper, we have the combined problem with the alignment and slope and we uh, resolve these problems together. Then we can achieve the good results for our um, uh, anterior tibial translation. And of course, we can decrease translation of our tibia to the femur. And if we are talking about the slope, we have to care about it to, to of course, the, the, the radiogram should be through the all plane of the tibia, because if we do the small picture of the, our knee, then we can uh, do mistake and, uh, and not see it correct and um, correct angle of our, of our slope. Also very important is if you are talking about the slope of the meniscus, because the results of this study strongly suggest that the lower meniscal slope of the both the medial and lateral posterior horns are associated with the ACL injuries in both males and females. But also I'm talking about it because if we resect the meniscus in the posterior parts, then we create a small slope of the, our meniscus. And also it will be not a good way for our ACL reconstruction. Also, a lot of papers like this one suggest us that if we do lateral meniscectomy and medial meniscectomy, we can provide our knees for, of course, Lachman positive and also for pivot shift positive, special if we will resect the partial or posterior part of the lateral meniscus. And just as this example, if we have the buckle handle and the, the lock knee with AC reconstruction, we can a lot of possibility to suture this meniscus. Pancrusting, if someone is afraid about it, is, I think no problem with this improved in many papers. We can precisely suture this, this our meniscus. And after stabilization of the knee, the, the distance between the fema and tibia will be the same, like should be normally. And it's a good situation for healing our pancrusting gastrogenic rupture of the NCL. 
And my, my whole message is that responsible for the stability of the knee joint are many structures. A serial rep repair must be done with repair of the other damaged structures. There are anatomical factors that increase the risk of treatment failure. And the insectomy is a risk of treatment failure also. And always, I, I would like to invite you for our Congress, which will be there on October 23, Polish Episcopal Society in Gdańsk, and also normally in Warsaw in the November, it's month November, special days, and you, I think we will each meet together and don't forget about abstract to our Congress in Milan. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Thomas. And if you want to introduce the last speaker. Yes, I will just share my gate. Uh, um, of course, and uh, now I would like to uh, introduce my colleague Sandro Carozzo, and he will talk about the, the universal graft fixation for all patients. Your podium. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you to moderators and to Polish Arthroscopy Society and to ESCA for this opportunity. So, an ideal um, graph fixation device has to be biomechanically reliable about strength, stiffness, and oppose the slippage of the graft, has to be anatomic, biocompatible, MRI compatible, safe, reproducible, and allow easy revisions. We can classify graft fixation devices in several ways, as for example, aperture or intratunnel fixation, as for interference screw or cross pins, or extraarticular fixation as for staples or cortical buttons. Or we can classify as direct fixation when a graft is compressed against the bone as for interference screw, staples, or spigot washers. Or indirect fixation when the graft suspended in the tunnel as for cross pin fixation or cortical buttons. Interference screw fixation for BTB as your graft has been well studied and documented over the past decades. A screw inserted in, uh, in the tunnel creates fix fixation, uh, friction between the bone plug and the bone tunnel by compression of the plug into the tunnel wall and by engagement of the screw threads both into the plug and into the tunnel wall. This was traditionally proven to be a reliable method of fixation and has led to the use of interference screw in both femoral and tibial bone plug fixation. However, in soft tissue fixation, the compressibility of the graft and the lack of screw thread engagement with a bone plug have resulted in less friction and consequently, cortical cancellus or cortical fixation were preferred to ensure adequate stability to the construct. But is that still the case? A recent survey of ESCA members, knee surgeons under the age of 45, showed a significant increase in preference for femoral graft fixation with cortical suspension compared to five years ago. The second most popular device, however, remained the interference screw. The 2021 survey of the ACL study group members showed that more than 50% prefer the femoral fixation with cortical suspensory fixation. However, the trend changed for the tibial fixation with more than 50% of respondents indicating a preference for interference screw fixation. This trend has been confirmed by the recently published ISACOS survey. Femoral fixation with cortical suspension was the most preferred, especially for hamstring tendon, while for BTB, screw fixation was still preferred. For tibial fixation, however, interference screw remained the more popular for both types of graft. At this point, I would like to pose two questions to the audience of this webinar. The first poll is, what is your preferred method of femoral fixation for ACL grafts? So we can see displayed the preference that the, there is a large preference in femoral fixation with cortical buttons and then with uh, interference screw and then other methods in vast minority. 
The second question is about your preferred method of tibial fixation for SEL grafts. So also in here, we have a large preference for interference crew, 78% in respect to 21 for cardiac balance. So we have seen the trends change over the years and currently cortical suspension fixation and the interference screws are the most popular. As the technologies evolve, both devices can be applied to soft tissue as well as bone plugs. For the screws, we have traditional metallic screw or peak screw or absorbable screw that have shown to have equivalent clinical results. Then for cortical suspensory devices as buttons, we can have fixed or adjustable loops. The use of adjustable loop is, most, most, uh, is more comfortable for the surgeon, but the two buttons are equivalent in, in clinical results. Several recent meta-analyses and network meta-analyses have demonstrated no clear superiority of any particular fixation method in clinical or patient reported outcomes. Also, the same type of fixation seems to work equally well with different type of graft. Even when comparing patients who underwent reconstruction with different fixation devices to patients who underwent press fixation without hardware, apparently there are no differences in clinical results. So the clinical results of different types of fixation overlap. Perhaps the key is not only in the biomechanical properties of a fixation device, However, different patient population would benefit from one type of fixation over another. For example, in patients with multiligament reconstruction, we need to reduce bone loss and to reduce the risk of ton tunnel collision. So cortical fixation is certainly an, an ideal fixation. Another population where we ha may have a preference for one device over another is a pediatric population where with cortical fixation, we can use an all epiphyseal and physial sparing reconstruction technique. Another example may be the, a patient where we cannot fully rely on intratunnel fixation. So patients with reduced BMD, such as middle-aged women, patients who have been immobilized for a long time, patients with metal hardware. Therefore, we can use a so-called hybrid fixation combining an intratunnel and an extra, extra tunnel fixation. This type of fixation has been shown to provide greater stability without increasing complication. So the hybrid fixation gives a mechanical advantage, but we can also get the biological advantage, especially if we use hamstring as a graft. As recently shown uh, by this paper, um, when preserving the hamstring attachment during ACR reconstruction, we can have undubbed benefits in graft eating, as well as improved clinical outcomes, probably due to hybrid fixation and to preserved vascularity. So in conclusion, my answer to the first question is no, there isn't a universal graft, fix graft fixation for all patients. The graft fixation must be tailored to the patient and to the surgeon preferences. And the key is to achieve a stable fixation respecting biology. See you to Walsow and to Milano and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Alessandro, and thank you all, all uh, speakers. We have uh, five, six minutes to, the, uh, to start uh, with discussion. At the end of the discussion, Thomas uh, give us the conclusion. Uh, so we start to the first questions. Uh, to um, I think to Roberto Simonetta, do you recommend an ACR reconstruction and anterolateral reconstruction in lateral meniscus deficient knee? Um, yes, yeah, it's a good question because, uh, in my opinion, the lateral meniscectomy uh, leads uh, dysfunction of lateral compartment and uh, especially in uh, rotational instability. So 
depends on the patients, but uh, I think yes, my answer is yes. So perfect, Thomas. Yeah, uh, I, I did the second question for the Roberto. I have the Roberto. Roberto, what do you yeah. think that the trends in our operation theater will be in the future that we will do uh, together for all primary ACL reconstructions, ACL and uh, LED? This is our direction in the future? Well, I think yes. I think we need uh, more plus of uh, the anatomical reconstruction and uh, is uh, a, a belt, a security belt for the ACL. I think uh, it's probably the future is uh, there is more let a society in additional of the ACL reconstruction, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also I had the question that, for example, um, Wukash, you think that uh, is the place still place exist for the internal bracing? Because uh, actually I did a lot, a lot of. of yes. Okay, so I did uh, I did some uh, internal bracing, and uh, the, the, in my opinion, of course, it, it doesn't uh, the, the literature doesn't reflect my my thoughts. My thoughts are that. The, there is a place for dynamic stabilization, but of course, with this ligament, ligamis uh, implant, there is a problem because this is big implant, the spring is inside, this is steel implant, so this is not a, not the best solution probably. But I think that mechanotransduction, which I discussed during the the uh, my presentation, is a key for the uh, promoting of the repair, which will be uh, which will be good for the function. So uh, right now for the static, I don't use it anymore because uh, remember that the, the reviews uh, I show I showed uh, are about uh, two years uh, of the of the follow up. So it's my experience is after one two years there is a a crack and the the instability comes. So with uh, dynamic I have better uh, better thoughts with dynamic stabilization, but uh, I think we are still on the way and it is not the good solution for everyone. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Davide, there's a question for you. Yep. Do you ever use combined synthetic and hamstring graft? Um, so if you, uh, if you mean a synthetic augmentation, like a tape uh, inside the, the hamstring graft, the answer is yes. Uh, and uh, um, it's usually uh, when my uh, graft is not, uh, I, don't, I don't see it as good as quality tissue or it's not large enough, uh, despite uh, doing a, a thick strand. If you mean a large, like a synthetic uh, graft, it's absolutely no. It's, uh, it's uh, either the, the synthetic, the large, or the, the biological. Okay, and my question for you is when you use a synthetic? So, yeah, we've just done very, very handful of cases. Um, so one, one case was a patient that we operated on in September. It was a ski teacher, as I as said in the presentation, and needed to, to be on, the, on his skis by December. Uh, and he did. So, uh, and he was 55 or something. So he needed to work in two months and uh, his knee was unstable. Another case was a, a revision uh, ACL in a 56 year old woman uh, with an instability, significant instability even during walking. Um, so these are two of the cases that I, that I remember. Um, uh, I, it would be if you consider a professional soccer player who has one year left of uh, playing soccer uh, and he wants to go as fast as he can back to, to the game and he's going to play one more year, probably that would be an indication too. Mm -hmm. There's another question from the panel. Uh, do you have any experience with the over-the-top technique as it has not been addressed in this uh, session? Who is answer? I, I can answer if you want. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, I do. I, I, I used to do the Marcacci technique before uh, when I had a, a big pivot shift on the clinical examination and before um, um, the lateral extraarticular tenodesis became popular or 
the anterolateral ligament reconstruction became popular. Uh, it's an excellent technique. It's very useful for ACL revision. Um, it's a, a way out to do a single stage ACL revision when you have uh, an enlarged femoral tunnel or uh, uh, an anterior femoral tunnel with the risk of uh, uh, confluency of uh, both tunnels. So that's, uh, it's a very good surgery. At second look, you will be amazed how good it looks on on second look surgery. So it's uh, I think it's a very good good surgery. It, I don't perform it routinely, but in selected cases, it's excellent. Lukas, yes, has a, a question. Uh, maybe this is for you. Uh, it was a virus deformity and ACL tear. So should go for the high tibial osteotomy before ACL. And if the pivot shift test uh, after ACL reconstruction, then do lateral extra articular tenodesis. Well, I think um, the axis is uh, it's a crucial thing for the, uh, for the uh, treatment. So uh, uh, it depends, uh, is it, uh, I think it's, uh, it's uh, a structural um, uh, virus, yeah. It's not. It's not a degenerative virus. Uh, so um, I would uh, assess the posterior slope. I would uh, assess the other uh, limb, and uh, then decide whether uh, this is a problem or, or not. Um, yeah. So last question. Uh, another question, maybe Alessandro. Uh, in your experience, have you an ACL failure with Lemaire? Uh, we have seen some ACL failures with Lemaire. And uh, so alternatively, we have performed uh, anterior ligament reconstruction. We have also seen failures with the uh, cocker technique that is implant free and with, uh, without uh, bone fixation of the strip of iotibial band. And we can perform another Cochrane not with another strip of fascia lata to perform a tenodesis for the revision surgery. Thanks. Davide, another question for you. Why the age of 27 in indication and contraindication for graft choice? Why exactly 27? Well, it's it's usually between it, it, what what the literature says is mostly 25. Uh, but as I'm becoming older, I'm increasing the age. Uh, so I'm seeing the patients uh, younger, despite they are actually older. So well, that's that's uh, you need to give uh, you need to give a cutoff at some point. Uh, but uh, there are obviously uh, sometimes I do quad reconstruction in 30 year old if they are still active athletes. So usually for the normal patient that just do recreational sport, that would be my cutoff age or a high risk and not high risk. Another question for all panel, I think. Does let the work behind two years? What's your opinion? Some say it's stretch out after two years. I think if, if, I, if I can answer, I think let is a good answer for our um, uh, remnant pivot, let's say, or uh, this small clicking which will interfere and uh, uh, gives the not good sensation for the patient, uh, and I believe in that. So it's it's in my practice is growing a growing addition to the to the ACL, uh, not only in in, in big pivot exploding. So I I don't I don't think it will uh, it would stretch out and uh, uh, yeah, but maybe I don't know yet. It. And I don't know if it's stretch out, but. Um... For sure, for sure, it's it's useful at time zero to address rotational instability and secondary strength lesions. But also, um, it has been proved that ad, uh, adding a lateral exterior tenodesis, so sharing the, the shear stress on the graft and on on the tenodesis, can lead to a better recovery of the ACR graft. So we have a, a more rapid and efficient ligamentization and graft. Uh, um process so uh for sure i don't know if it stretch out but for sure it's useful also at uh, in the first month after ACR reconstruction question for roberto uh, do you change your let technique if you approach in uh, in uh, uh, first ACR reconstruction or in 
a revision ACL reconstruction, you change your technique or not? No, don't change my technique. And uh, before I perform always the Cocker Arnold 15 years ago. Now I perform a Le Maire 2.0 with a staple or with now with soft anchor. But uh, and I think that it worked very, very well. Um, so I don't change for revision. Always in revision, I perform always let the in addition. In primary, not always, but uh, I, I I think it's very important to search all the structure, uh, all the injuries inside the knee, and then think outside the knee to control better the rotation instability. Uh, if I can add something, uh, I think that if it will stretch out, it's not so bad because uh, it acts. Uh, so with the with the lead, the problem is where it is overstrained. So the problem uh, with uh, extension could be a, an issue if you overstretch it. So uh, maybe if it will, will uh, stretch out, it's not a big deal because it will protect, uh, as Alessandro said, to protect the, the ACL at the beginning and then the mechanotransduction with, with transduction, which I which I discussed, will, will act as a, a regulator. Okay. Uh, I think uh, we are answered to all main questions. If uh, Thomas uh, want to conclude. Yes, I will. Wait, please. And yeah. Again, thank you very much for, for this meeting. I think that it was great opportunity to be the part of the Academieska and uh, if you would like to see it again or to share this webinar for your colleagues, friends and work, people who are in duty today, you can use it this in by Academieska.org and uh, this is supported for our SK education and uh, I think we will meet together in other, other webinars, other meetings created by education. Of course, please um, write to us and show us that that was the good meeting, the good webinar, because always we would like to be better and we can change. Um, your suggestions are very important for us, for, for, for all faculties, but also for SK and for Polish Atroscopy Society. And remember, we have two big meetings to that in, in this year. And this year we have the big meeting and special days in November 24, 25 in Warsaw. I think one of the beautiful capital uh, uh, capital uh, city in, 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 in Europe, a really modern and uh, changed in the last 30 years. Please come. You will find a very good um, uh, the food, good uh, architecture, a very good quality of the, the hotels and very friendly people. And also, I would like to also invite you, like the president of Polish Atroscopy Society to our gala meeting, which is every two years. And this year will be in October 1921 in Gdańsk, very special city where in the Solidarność is born. And also you will have attraction. You will see these places. Uh, please wel welcome to, to, to Poland for the both Congresses. And of course, I think everybody will see each other in Milano and Milan. And we should see it in Milan uh, in pandemic time, but uh, COVID closed the way to uh, Italy. But I hope to see it in Italy in, in the next year in May, beautiful month uh, in, in Europe. And again, thank you very much. We are very happy that we will be part of the the big ESCA family, because we are also the part of the ESCA and uh, most Polish arthroscopy uh, doctors, Polish arthroscopy society doctors are also in ESCA. We are a big part of this big, great organization. And thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you for the old faculty and friends. Thank you for the all uh, more than uh, 150 participants. Uh, 
we are very happy and proud to share our experience in the ESCA highlight webinar. A big uh, thanks to Thomas and the uh, All Polish uh, Arthroscopy Society. And uh, see you in Warsaw in uh, November and next year here in Milan. Thank you very much. See you. See you. Goodbye. Bye. See you. Bye bye. Ciao a tutti. Ciao. Bye. Bye, everybody. Ciao. Bye.